Zhang Shicheng was one warlord at the end of Yuan Dynasty. He was previously a sword smuggler. You may wonder what is sword smuggler. Sword smuggler probably only existed in China. In national China, sword was state monopolized, so the price of sword was ridiculously high. People were not allowed to participate in sword business. If anyone was found selling sword, he would be sentenced by government. Still, some people would risk their lives to sell sword. These people are called sword smugglers. Sword smugglers, like any other smugglers, were the money laundering agents for rich businessmen and the government officials. They had good relationships. With both the government and the gangsters, Zhang Shicheng was such a sword smuggler. He had a good reputation locally because he was brave and generous in aiding needy people. As a smuggler, he had a good relationship with the local government, merchants, and the landlords. In 1351, Red Turban Rebellion broke out. The trend of overthrowing the rule of Mongols inspired Zhang Shicheng and his brothers. However, they did not have weapons. Yuan Dynasty government did not allow people even to use kitchen knives in some regions. Zhang Shicheng and his sworn brothers, altogether eighteen men, then put the ribbon fish on their shoulder poles. The silver ribbon fishes looked like the shining blades reflecting the moonlight. With their super ribbon fish swords, they rushed into the local government building and occupied the place. Eighteen sword smugglers occupied the government place by their shoulder poles. I'm not making stories. The secret hidden under the historical records. When the Red Turban Rebellion had destroyed the social orders, the local government of Zhang Shicheng's hometown could not maintain the local social orders, because Zhang Shicheng had a good reputation locally, and he had a good relationship with the rich merchants and government officials. These people wished someone like Zhang Shicheng. Could take the responsibility of maintaining social order. That's why he was so easily occupied the government place. Zhang Shicheng's hometown and the surrounding places were in Yangtze River Delta region, which was the richest place of China from then till now. The people there were so afraid of the red turbans, they desperately wanted a person like Zhang. To protect the security, ever since the Mongols decided to withdraw from the South China market, the bandits were everywhere. In Red Turban occupied regions, the Red Turbans killed the rich people and took their properties to maintain the army. After they used all the resources of one place. They would attack another place and do the same thing again. Zhang Shicheng was a rich landlord and a businessman. He ran his army and government by a totally different way at the Red Turban regions. He knew how to impose tax and promote economy to run his army and government, and he was good at defending the Red Turbans. At that time. Lots of people became refugees because of Red Turban Rebellion. In ancient time, it was hard for commoners to find their way back home once they were lost. Many lost young men were forced to be the soldiers of warlords. Zhang Shicheng never forced his people to join his army like other warlords. Instead, he installed lanterns. On intersections to help people find their way back home, Zhang Shicheng maintained the social security and settled the homeless people. He won the support of the local people; they regarded him as their great savior. 
Zhang Shicheng was so proud of himself. He was the richest warlord at that time, and he occupied the richest place of China. His place was part of Wu. Wu was one kingdom during the Three Kingdoms period. The famous Three Kingdoms warlord Sun Quan had been the king of Wu. Zhang Shicheng gradually formed the ambitions of inheriting the legitimacy of being the king of Wu. His first step was propaganda. Just then, a nursing rhyme became popular in the Wu place. One of the lyrics is, "When the year of sheep comes to all of you, the whole world will belong to the king of Wu." Every child was saying the song, and everyone is wondering, "Who is the king of Wu?" Zhang Shicheng had waited for the whole year. In the next year, it was the year of sheep. Just as Zhang was about to proclaim himself to be the king of Wu, suddenly a big news hit him. His greatest rival, Zhu Yuanzhang, proclaimed to be the king of Wu. Zhang Shicheng was so angry that he wasted one year's propaganda fees and time for his rival. Now he could do nothing but also proclaim to be the king of Wu after Zhu Yuanzhang became the king of Wu. Zhu Yuanzhang's land was also part of Wu. They two competed to be the king of Wu. Because Zhu Yuanzhang's part was in the west, while Zhang Shicheng's land was in the east, people then called Zhu Yuanzhang the king of West Wu, while Zhang Shicheng the king of East Wu. Zhu Yuanzhang's land was the agricultural part, which was poor but more combative. Zhang Shicheng's part was the rich part. Zhang never wanted to occupy Zhu's land and to take the responsibility of feeding numerous peasants, but Zhu never gave up the ambitions to take Zhang Shicheng's land. Zhang Shicheng and Zhu Yuanzhang were both warlords. At the end of Yuan Dynasty, but there were two different warlords. Zhu Yuanzhang was the aggressive type of warlords. He was recorded by the traditional Chinese historians as the ambitious warlords who had the dream of uniting China. Zhang Shicheng never wanted to unite China, nor he wanted to have wars with other warlords. If other warlords did not attack him, he would never take the initiative to attack others. His greatest ambition was to have more women, children, and wealth. After becoming the king of East Wu, Zhang Shicheng enjoyed his good life. At that time in South China, there were three big warlords: Zhang Shicheng, Zhu Yuanzhang, and Chen Youliang. Zhu was in the middle of Chen and Zhang. If these two warlords united to get rid of Zhu Yuanzhang, Zhu would be easily exterminated. Chen Youliang was the same kind of warlords as Zhu Yuanzhang. They were both very aggressive. Chen Youliang always wanted to get rid of Zhu, so he wanted to cooperate with Zhang Shicheng. Zhang Shicheng agreed to join the same camp with Chen Youliang. In 1363, Chen Youliang and Zhu Yuanzhang had a big fight at Poyang Lake. Zhang Shicheng was happy to see Chen and Zhu had wars. He did not want to help his ally. The rich businessmen and landlords of Zhang Shicheng's land did not want to sponsor Zhang Shicheng. To help their ally, either they did not want to spend money. Zhu Yuanzhang was the weakest of the three. Chen Youliang was the strongest in military. However, miracle happened. Zhu Yuanzhang won the war. Chen Youliang was killed. Zhu Yuanzhang's next aim was Zhang Shicheng. In 1366, Zhu Yuanzhang took all his troops to attack Zhang Shicheng. If he won, he would be the king of South China. 
His men were all in full spirit. They were eager to grab the huge wealth of Zhang Shicheng's land. The war between Zhang Shicheng and Zhu Yuanzhang was so hot. The rich businessmen and landlords of Zhang Shicheng's land knew what would happen to them if Zhang failed. This time, they could not ask the Mongols to help them because Mongols had given up South China. Finally, Zhu Yuanzhang's Red Turban Army broke in. Zhang Shicheng was caught alive. He refused to su surrender. And he committed suicide. After Zhang Shicheng died, people of his land still loved him. They built temples to memorize Zhang Shicheng. Zhu Yuanzhang hated people of East Wu, so he exiled people there, all of China, and never allowed them to come back to East Wu, which was the richest part of China. There was a popular folk song named Jasmine Flower in Zhang Shicheng's hometown. People exiled from East Wu sing this song to relieve their homesickness and memorize Zhang Shicheng. This song soon became popular all over China and passed on till today.